uh, I just want to, to the sermon today, I, I put the title, God is still speaking today, because he is. He's still talking to us. I don't know if he speaks to you, but he speaks to me many times and in different ways every day. He's still speaking today. He's not just in the, in the Bible. Uh, we understand the Bible has part of the Word of God because God is so big, so powerful that we cannot hold all his thoughts and all his things in just one book. See, he is more than that. And he's still talking to us in many different ways. And he's still doing it today. And it is normal for, for, for said, uh, read the Bible passages where God has spoke, spoke uh, different people in the past. And different circumstances, he gives a message and it's special to them. But uh, that will be considered usual or normal that God speaks to people. Uh, we can see some example how God spoke to some, some people directly. One of those was Moses. Remember when Moses was uh, get away from Egypt? He got scared because he killed one of those uh, Egypt's uh, workers, the leaders, and he was in the, in the desert uh, taking care of the ship. And then the Lord spoke to him through the burning, ship, uh, the, the burning bush and had the voice, Moses, Moses. If you know the story, Moses go approach to the uh, burning bush and, and said, the Lord said, take off your sandals because this is a, a holy land. And God spoke to him and give you one assignment. I need you to get back to Egypt and free my people, deliver my people from the uh, slavery. Also, and I've been talking about this a couple Sundays be- uh, before, it's about how God spoke to Samuel. Remember, Samuel was living in the, in the temple with Eli, or Eli, the, 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 the priest at that time, and God spoke to him when he was sleeping. For those who like to sleep, God can talk to you even when you are sleeping too. Uh, and he was sleeping, and the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel, and he called Samuel for many times until he realized that was God trying to connect with him and speaking to him. And the other way when we see God spoke, uh, spoken, uh, talking was with Jesus. God spoke to Jesus through the Holy Spirit when Jesus decided to go to John the Baptist and get baptized by him. You know, when, when he was in the water, the Bible said that the Holy Spirit in, in the form of dove come down, a, a bright light there, and then it's a big boy said, this is my son who pleased my heart. And then we see many, many moments in the Bible with God, God himself speaks directly to some people. Let's see the Revelations Bible. In the Revelation book, we see the Lord speaking directly to John. He said, hey, John, hey, come on, John. See, can you see all this? And you say, yes, Lord, okay. Write it down, everything that you see and that you hear from me. And John starts writing. But... I understand that when I read the Bible and see that God is speaking to us. But the situation changed when people said, oh, God has talked to me today. I get uh, really, really cons- uh, chaos- uh, cautious with that when people say, God has talked to me, Pastor, that you should do this and this and this. Okay, I say, okay, hold on. Hold your horses a little bit. Let's, let's see what God says to you, where he said, where he said it, why he said that to you. And, and I believe when, when people say, God speak to me, uh, we need to think in those four questions in place. How God speak to you, when he did it, where, and why. I think that those questions is very important, and we can check if that message came from God or came from us, because we call it speak to God through our prayers. We know that. Uh, but the prayer is not a monologue. God always speaks to us because it's two ways. And sometimes we have to be cautious because we, we have something in our mind, in our heart. That's why uh, we, we, read, uh, we read that Bible verse today where when I said this is the call for worship, that my thought in my meditation, please you. Because sometimes when we came to the Lord in prayer, we came from different circumstances who 
kept our heart, and maybe we and the subconscious, we want to God saying something that we want to hear. And we are not allowed God to speak, but we speak our heart so hard that we hear, hear our voice and confuse it with God. And that's why we need to, uh, a prayer is a to wait God to speak to us, and we have to wait and see, God, is this you? Is it really you or is it me? Because like I said, God, uh, when God uh, talks, we have to be uh, sure that the voice of God is very clear. And his message is very precise and clear. And we have to understand why he's speaking that. Because sometimes uh, people can say, God, I've been in, in, in this situation. And, and you know, God, you know that I am broke. I don't have any money. And I have this, uh, this tie. And I should use it for myself or, or I give it to you. And then, oh, no, son, go and buy now new clothes for you. Use it whatever you, you please. That's yours. You work hard for that money. Well, maybe we have to be careful how who's, who's talking there. Is this the Lord or this is just my desire? We, we need to be very clear how God is spark to us. But that's why I believe that God is still talking to us today. Where? When? Anytime. We see in the Bible that he speaks when people are sleeping, when they are working just like a muscle taking care of the ships. And how? In different ways. Through the burning bush, through the higher voice with no one would see who is speaking there. God is speaking in different ways, but always he is speaking in order to help us to go back to the right path to get back to a great connection with him. He always speaks not just to please our heart, but to make us uh, uh, to fix whatever is broken in our relationship with him. It not, God is not in the business to make us happy. God is in the business to make us in the right relationship with him. And I believe this is the way that God speaks to us all the time in order to help us to continue the journey until the end. That's why the Apostle Paul says, it's not that I finished my goal yet. I continue toward my goal, toward the day when I see the Lord. And those things, when we need the voice of God helping us like a great tutor, like a great mentor, telling us when we get away from the right path, say, hey, you have to come back. You have to come back to the right path. This is when we hear the, bo the, bo the voice of God. And we can see the same message in the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And the Old Testament, every time the, the people of Israel, the people of God, go away from him, he said, hey, my dear people, you need to come back to me. You're doing wrong. If you're going in this direction. You're going to die. But it's better if you go back to me. Please, my heart, I will be your God if you be my people. Always God is telling that. And the New Testament, we see God saying, oh, I love the whole world. If you believe in me, you have eternal life. God always is telling us that he wants a clear, good, a strong, and healthy relationship with us, his creator and his child and his children. But we need to know when God is speaking to us or no. And some people say, God, Pastor, when or how can I know is God is speaking to me or is my, my own mind, my own desires? How can I identify that? Well, the Bible always has the answer. In John chapter 10, 27, 28 says, in order, this, in order that God to speak, it's necessary that pre-existing relationship between God and the people who are interlocutor with him. It's necessary when God wants to speak to you or me, it has to be a previous relationship between us. Why, Pastor? Why have to be a previous relationship? Because we need to know who's speaking. I believe when, when, when some of your friends or maybe your children call you by phone, you don't have to see who's calling. When you hear the voice, says, oh, Oh, this is Jeremy trying to talk to me. Oh, this is Josue. This is my, my, my wife is trying to. Even I don't see their face, but I recognize her voice. And this is what John chapter 10, 27, 
28 says. They say, my chief, listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Look, first says, my sheep. It, it means that we belong to who? To him. It just said, I know them, and they know me. There is a really, really close relationship there. It, it, it's the only way that we can recognize the voice of God. If we had a, a strong relationship with him. We know him, and he knows us. We know him. He is a power. He is almighty. He is strong. He is the only God. He is uh, faithful. We can trust him. We know all the attributes of God. And God knows us, too. He knows that your heart belongs to him. He knows that maybe sometimes you fell, but he's still loving you. He knows all about us. But the good thing is there is that relationship there. Just like those who are married here, uh, I think uh, Jim and Jim uh, and Bob, you are more than 50 years married, no? And, and I believe maybe I go too deep in that relationship, but is any of you perfect? No, no, okay, they're not perfect. I'm not perfect either. And the relationship, it doesn't mean that we have to be perfect. It's going to be days when we have some bumps in there in the road. But the good thing is that we know each other. We know how our people uh, is, you know. I know uh, uh, that the they're not perfect. Sometimes uh, women are uh, thinking different than us, isn't it? Well. Or no. Uh, I, I told you when. See, when, when, the, when you are going to play golf, maybe. Is anyone play golf here? I'm not playing golf. I, I play soccer. See, maybe you, you, I got the ball here. That I, I hear this one guy said, I'm going to be playing uh, football soccer with the ball and got all my, my shoes ready. And my wife says, where are you going? Uh, I'm going to put all this in the, in the, in the garage. <laughs> because he, he, he knows that the wife don't want him to play, see? But, oh, or when the woman says, can I go Friday with my friends? Yes, you can. If you take all the stuff and you go with your friends, why you leave me alone at home? If you say so that I can't? No, I said that you, you can, but I didn't say that you can go, see? Sometimes the message is... And not what we think about it. We are not perfect. We cannot communicate it well sometimes between people. We are not perfect, but we deal. We work together. We try to fix things. It's, it's the same thing with God with us. God knows that we are not perfect, but we know his voice. We know his voice when he said, I forgive you. We know his boy when he said and called our attention that we have to fix some situation in our life. And that exactly is what happened here in chapter 10, 27, and 28. God know you. God know you, and he knows you well. We cannot hide in anything from God. He knows your, your deeds. He knows your good and your bad. He knows you, but he's still loving you, and he's still speaking to you. But we need to recognize when God is talking to us, when we have a deep and a strong relationship with him. When a deep relationship exists between God and us, it's easy to get in touch. See, when you don't know anyone, some other person that you want to be in, in contact, you have to make an appointment, and you have to do all this protocol. Uh, can you introduce me to that people? I want to just meet them. I, I don't feel comfortable to go and just speak to them. Let's, let's break their eyes and you can introduce me to the people. Or you have to make an appointment to know with someone else. But when you have a great relationship with someone, you just need to take your phone and you can text or call. And you don't have to do a, a big protocol before that. You just sit down and start chatting each other. That's what we do with God. When we have a great relationship with him, we don't need to do a great things before. We don't have to bring a sheep and sacrifice something and say, Lord, now can you give me permit to, to talk to you? No, the Bible says, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 33, 3. That is one of my favorite verses too. 
this. Because when we need to call God, when we need to hear his voice, he's not hiding. He's not somewhere there in the, in, 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 in the, in the galaxy is hiding somewhere from you. He is easy to find. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call me, call to me, and I will answer you, and I tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know. Just call me. You need me? Call me. In Hebrew chapter, chapter 4, 12 said that we can go with confidence before his throne and receive mercy when we must need it. That is not a big deal if we have a great relationship with him to hear his voice. To hear his voice. And there is a moment when we need to hear the voice of God, when we feel desperate, when we got in trouble, when we are uh, in need of someone to give you a, a pun in your back, someone who's telling you you are doing a good job, or when you're doing bad, but you say that you can do it better, I'll be with you. We need those words in our life. And God is willing to give it to you. God is willing to speak to you. You know, when, when we need God, normally we, we need God when, when we are in trouble, isn't it? Yeah. When we are doing well, God is there in heaven. Thank you, God, for giving me the wisdom to do this. I am so smart. Thank you for making me this way. Make me so strong, so handsome. I can, I can conquer this girl. Now I got my girl in my right hand. Thank you, God. You make me. For now, Lord, you can stay there in your throne. I can do it well here. But when we have some trouble, who is the first person that we call? God, because we believe in him. And sometimes even those who do not believe in God asking us to pray to God. Some people who you are uh, almost tired to invite them to come to church. Come to church. No, no, this is not for me. This is not my business. No, you, it's right for you, but it's not right for me. But when they are in trouble, say, hey, can you pray for me? You are very close to God. God will hear you. Can you pray for me? They know that you have a great close relationship with God, and that is okay. Because even us, when we are in trouble, God is willing to hear. This is Psalm 138.3. This is, when I call, you answer me. You greatly embolden me. Woo, I need some encouragement from God sometimes. Oh, God, look what I did. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, Lord. Help me, Lord, because sometimes you, I feel alone, and then he came... Well, I didn't see the, 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 the army of angels around me, but I feel God in my heart. He says, son, you're doing okay. Or I, I read the Bible, some message from the Lord said, i be with you all days of your life until the end. I said, thank you, Lord, because I need to hear that from you. Because God is still listening, and God is still talking to us. He's still speaking to us. Psalms 86, 6 and 7 says, Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. God is still speaking today. You want to hear his voice? You just need to call him. Do you know how? But well, one of the ways is what this man in Psalms 86, 6 and 7 is doing. Call his name. That's the only thing that we need to hear his voice. Call my name. Ask for my help and I will be there. I will answer your prayer. This is great to know that God is still speaking to, do, to us today. Remember, when we can hear God's voice anytime, anywhere, when, anytime, especially when we must need him, just say, God, I need you. And he says, call me and I will be answered. This, this is so easy. And we see many of those uh, people of God who fell in their assignment and the way they live. But even though in that kind of living, God is still answered their prayers. One of those was Sansom. 
Do you know Sansón? Dalila and Sansón. Sansón was those who, who, who was uh, prepared for his mother, the, uh, present the child to the Lord, said he will serve the Lord all his life. But he decided something different, you know. He liked women. He had many of them. And he living what uh, Ricky Martin said, la, li la vida loca. See, he's doing whatever he pleases himself and so on. But when he was in trouble, the, animal, the enemies captured him. And you know what he was. He, they take out his eyes and everything. He cut his hair. It was the, 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 uh, he had no power. When he was like that, he said, Lord, you know what? I'm not going to allow them to mock in your name. Give me the power again one more time, Lord, and I will destroy this, this people. And God answered his prayer. God gave back to him one more time all his strength, his power, and he destroyed the enemy at that time. Even when he didn't please the Lord, but he knows that he has to honor God's name. He asked him, pray, Lord, help me. Because I don't want them to mock your name. And God helped him, even when he wasn't the perfect follower of God. But some other was Joshua. Joshua, uh, he just got the leadership from, got the baton from, from Moses. So now he uh, has a great situation where people will say, oh, the Lord is with you, or the Lord is like, away from you. He, has a, he wants to conquer one of those uh, 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 countries, the Jericho, but there was a big wall. And you know the story. And he spoke to God. God, help me to defeat these people. I cannot destroy this wall. And you know that God spoke, spoke to him. He said, go around this wall. How many times? Seven and the last one, you have to, the whole people in town yelled the name of God, and those walls fell down. And you know that God defeated the people of Jericho. God helped Joshua when he most needed. But God was in his voice, and he answered him because he called God. He called God to help him. And Jesus also cried out to his father. In the, in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Lord, why? Look, I have to die for these people. They're disobedient. They don't want to, to follow you. You know, uh, even uh, John the Apostle, maybe in the future, he's going to write it down. He came to was his people, but his people re rejecting him. You know, they not, their heart is not with me, and I have to die for them. But Lord, give me the strength because it's not my will. It's your will. And then God answered a prayer. If you read the Bible, it said that many angels came to give strength to him, and he finished the line. And you know that there is no more Jesus Christ in that cross. He is alive because he called, he cried out to his father, and his father answered his prayer. God is still speaking today. And you know Paul and Silas was in jail. It's not easy to be in jail, isn't it? But in, in the middle of this awful moment, he started worshiping God, singing to him, opening his heart to him, and God answered, make a big earthquake, and he released them. Wow. God is still speaking to us. He cares about us. And that helps us to understand that sometimes we are we are angry or we are not in peace with some people. And the life is so short. Life is so short to not get into good relationship with some people too. Because we have to follow God's example. He speaks to us even when we are not perfect. I know the, perf the person right next to us sometimes is not perfect. But it's not reason to fighting each other. It's not reason to not speak each other. We need to follow God's example. We need to love each other. And one of those love is about words. Words of encouragement. Word of peace. Word of love. 
That's a gift from God, that way that we can speak. But remember that God is still using different ways to communicate with us. Even before we get into a relationship with God, God speaks to everyone through his creation. See? Even before. It's great when we are in relationship with him because it's getting stronger and deeper. But even before God takes the initiative to call us to get in his relationship with him. This is what uh, Psalms 19 one says. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaim the work of his hand. We already see God working. Sometimes in the, uh, in the morning when my wife and I, going to, uh, she's going to take me to, to the place where I take the bus to go to my work. To my, uh, uh, we, we're going uh, west. No, we're going east. And you know the, the sounds came here all orange, all this part. Say, wow, that's beautiful how God made all this. Uh, 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 the sound and the scenario look very nice. And when we're going back to home, we're going to the west side. And we see all again that big ball of fire there. Red, sometimes orange. I say, wow, this is beautiful. Well, when we got the snow, I know that it's sometimes it's not easy to drive into the snow, but when the snow came through all those evergreen trees, oh, and some people take some pictures, what a beautiful scenario there. And that tells us that someone, some power, have to do this. And we know that was God. And the nature announced that God is powerful and he speak to us through the na nature. Even in the New Testament, Romans chapter 120 said, Oh, everyone knows because God is, is in the business to try to put the human being into his relationship. And, but, you know, sometimes the human being rejects that kind of relationship with God. Uh, Romans 120 says, Since the creation, the world... The word God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so the people are without excuse. God already take the first step to get into a relationship. God take the first step to speak to us, and he already did it through the creation. And we should appreciate what God has to say. But once that we get into God's uh, relationship with him, there is another way that he goes even deeper in that relationship and he starts speaking to us through the scripture. Because before that, we don't know the scripture, but now in that relationship with him, we should know the scripture. And we, learn, we, we started last Monday with a program connected with the scripture. And we start reading the New Testament in 70 days. And we have yesterday and this morning we have our first meeting together and how we uh, allow God to speak through the scripture. And that's great. And this is what Second Timothy chapter 3, 16 says. All the scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so the serving of God may be uh, thoroughly equipped. Uh, equip for every good work. God is still speaking today. You want to hear your voice? Read the Bible. You need some direction in your life? Read the Bible. You don't know what to do? Read the Bible. You don't see any door open? Read the Bible. Because God wants to direct your life. God wants to help you. God wants to train you because he's still speaking today through the scripture and we as a believer we as a people in relationship with him we should read the bible but not only speak through the bible this is one way god is so wonderful that he had many ways to speak to us we should take advantage and take all of these ways to us not just stick to one and the other is he used the church to the partnership with the one another, we can learn more and more about God. You know, in this, 
Uh, I explained to do this to you last week why we, we had the 70 days uh, reading the scripture. And at the end of this week, we got it together and discussed what we, what we learned. And I said, because God is so powerful, God is so big, that we as a limited person, we don't understand everything that God says. But somebody else knows better than me. And we all together can put that puzzle together and we can see the big picture, the big message of God for us through the people of God. And that helps us to uh, continue to grow, continue to make good decisions and be strong and mature in our faith. And this is how the Bible said that this fellowship and the Christian life help us to grow, help us to reaffirm our faith, help us to go in the right direction, and help us to church to grow too. Every day, they continue to meet together in the temple court. It can be in real connection church too. And they broke bread in their homes and eat together with glad and sincere heart. Sincere heart, I will put that in red. Because those who are looking for God has to have a very sincere heart. Recognize the strongs they did. Sincere heart. And they, this is what they do. Praising God and enjoying the favor of the old people. And the Lord add to their numbers daily those who were being saved. Isn't it wonderful? God is still speaking to us. And God is still speaking to those who are aside of his flock through you and me for our fellowship, for what we're doing together because we love each other and we talk each other and we live together and we encourage one to another. And they see that fellowship. They see the smile that we get out when we get out from the church. Oh, they're really happy. I need that. And that's why we see people come to Jesus Christ anytime. Because they know, even if they don't want to recognize it, but they know that the believers live better. They are happy. They are in peace, even though they want to recognize that. Or wait until they need it, and we'll see. And the other way is because Hebrews chapter 10 tells us to not to uh, uh, be accident of the church. Be there. It says, not giving up meeting together as some are the habit of doing, but encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day is approaching. See, we can hear Sundays. One day. And thank you for your presence here. You, you make a decision. You know, everything in life is decisions. And you make the decision. You make the decision to stay home or come to church. You make the decision to go someplace else or be in the church. And you, I believe you make the right choice today. Because God is still speaking to you and still speaking to me. God speaks through the fellowship of your brother and sister. Do not stop coming to church. Even invited your friend to church. Invited other brother and sister that you don't see today. Take your phone and say, hey, I didn't see you today in church. What happened? Are you sick? Are you out of the town? Uh, do you need a ride? How can, what can I make in order to see you in church? Because every time that you came to church, you put a smile on my face. I am so glad to see you here in church. There is anything that I can do in order to see you next Sunday in the church. Because your presence in church encouraged some others. Because some people walk by sight, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't see my friend anymore in church. I better stop coming because my friend is not coming. You know, they come in by seeing. Well, in order that they came, you can come here. You are helping your uh, 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 weak brother in faith. You're helping them by assisting at the church. Your presence in church is important. You are not just a number. You inspire people. You encourage people. You are important for somebody else, even you don't know that. 
Because when people say, see you, they see many things that maybe you don't see in the mirror. Because sometimes we judge ourselves very hard. And we f feel like, oh, I not deserve, I not important, no one cares, if I'm not going to church, it's not true. That's what the evil one wants you to believe. But you are important for some people. Maybe someone that you don't know personally. But the Lord speaks to him or to her through your life, through your testimony. That's why it's important not to give up meeting together. And for conclusion, says, do, do not miss the opportunity to hear God's voice. God has an excellent message for you every day. Let's make our relationship with God stronger every day and practice that spiritual discipline. Pray, fasting, reading the Bible, contemplating, meditating the scripture. This is the way that God speaks to you. This is the way if we are feeding by God, we will be able to feed in others too. God wants to speak to you. And he's still speaking to you. We just need to call him. Call me and I will be answered. And that is for today and for tomorrow and the days to come. Amen. Amen.